All right, let's jump into this Q&A here for people that... We also did a segment on Observer Live today if you want more, but we talked about the gist of it here. Now, this person says, Dave mentioned on Observer Live earlier today, ESPN has basically cut off all ties to WWE. Are they open to working with other promotions like AEW, or are they done with wrestling entirely? It's got nothing to do with wrestling. Um, so, I mean, in theory, you know, there's no ban, as far as I know, on, you know, getting, you know, guests. So let's say Shaq. Let's just say Sha- Shaq does a, a match or Tyson does a match or something like that. Um, yeah, they could put them on or they could put, you know, Cody Rhodes on or whatever. They didn't ban wrestling, but it was just like WWE, um, you know. So um, I don't know if that means that they'll do anything with them, but but the ban, I was told, was 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 WWE. What is the story with the stock price? Okay, so... Yeah, a lot of people were going like this great deal and how come um, the stock price didn't go up? And it still may because, um, you know, a lot of analysts are going like, okay, this this puts more value in the stock and the stock price. There were already people who thought the stock price should be higher, including me. It, it went, it was like too high. And then when, um, you know, Vince fired Michelle Wilson and um, George Barrios, it collapsed and it got too low considering, you know, the, the profitability of the company. So um, it's now creeping back near where the value should be. It's actually still, in my mind, a little bit on the low side. So it, it, you know, maybe even a lot on the low side. So it should go up, but it didn't go up today because the gains, you know, basically in the last week or so, you know, I wrote about it in the Observer in the issue that's up right now. You can read my ex- analysis of why the stock went up the last two weeks, and so this was figured. This deal was figured in. That, that it was about to happen, and that's why the stock price went up. So when the deal was consummated, it didn't go up. Um, and in fact, in in many ways, um, because of the idea that there is no pay-per-view, one could say that it could have been you know a more lucrative deal and, and maybe a better deal, but it's a good deal for WWE. And the price may still go up, but the reason it didn't go up is because it went up you know pretty much like $10 a share in the last couple of weeks based on the fact that there was a lot of talk that they were going to uh, sell the pay-per-view component like ESPN did with UFC, and that is not what ended up happening. But that was the uh, word on the street. This person here says, with Fox essentially being left out of the most, out of this, most of the WWE content, do you think that at the time of renewal, they might look at AEW as an alternative to WWE? You know, I mean, I, I knew that this was going to be asked, and it's a really hard question to answer because we don't know. You know, in two years, things could change. I mean, AEW could go down, AEW could go up, WWE could go down. You know what I mean? It's like, I would not rule that out. I would say it's a long shot, but in two years, it may be the, like, look, in two years, that may be the smart move anyway. You know? I mean, there's just no way of knowing. So I would say, I... I would say, like, today, I would lean towards no, but considering they're not, no one's talking today, they're going to be talking in, in a couple of years, and in a couple of years, whatever the numbers are will determine what move is made. If AEW's numbers go way, way up, absolutely. If AEW's numbers go way down, of course not. If, w, you know, if WWE's numbers go way, way up, um, they may want to keep them. If they go way, way down, they won't want to keep them. So, um if AEW's numbers surpass WWE's and Fox can go in there and go, we can get um, we can get a higher rating and at, at at a lower price. You know why wouldn't they get them? So it's I guess the best answer is to be determined based on the uh, fate of both companies over the next two years. But today I would say leaning towards no. This person here says, with this new deal in place with NBC, does NBC now own the tape library, or does the intellectual property still belong to WWE? Are they just renting the content for $1 billion over the next few years? Yeah, essentially you're renting the content for five, for five years. WWE owns all the content. So, yeah, that's why, I mean, we talked about it earlier today. Um, for all the money that they're paying, they really, NBC really should have bought the company. And maybe they will, you know, because... The the hard part about buying the company is that deal with Fox. It's like you're 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 going to own a company, and one of your key components is going to be on a rival network. That's a really weird mix. But when that expires, I would 
think NBC would go hard after SmackDown, which also may open it up, you know, for AEW or something like that, um, you know. But I think that they would go hard, and if they have it all, it really at that point makes complete sense to buy the whole thing because, my, you know, after these deals are up, because you're already paying these deals. But, you know, like, the the... To buy, I mean, you couldn't get the stock for like four point two billion, which is about what the value is right now. Um, you'd have to pay more, but even if you paid like six billion, they're they're paying, you know, well, they're paying um, two point uh, blah, 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 um, what would it be two point three two point four billion um, over five years right now. You know, you put that over fifteen years, and you're already way over the the price that it would cost to buy it you might as well if if you think that the only concern is if you think that there's no long term in this thing and if you think there's no long term in this thing even the five year deal probably doesn't make sense so they have you know but uh yeah all things i mean it it, it you know and then you know also when these deals are up i mean vince is going to be you know late 70s so that's going to play into it as well but um yeah i mean you're paying so much and then the key is is that you're going to have it. You're going to have the rights to it for life. You're going to have all the international money that you're not getting. You're going to be, you know, even if you're, and you're not going to be spending, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, it's, you know, if they want to get back SmackDown, um, and they, I'm sure that they will at this point now, I mean, you're talking about spending probably three quarters of a billion dollars a year for this product um, it makes no sense to be spending that money. You should just buy it. This person here says, I'm wondering what classic content they will pull from the network and move to Peacock. Will they port everything over, or will they cherry-pick certain things? I was told everything moves over. All, all, everything that's up will move over. Now, as far as how much new will be put up, I mean... I, well, hold know, on. Let's go back a minute. So everything, like on day one, March 17th, everything is going to be over, or they will begin moving things over? Um, I was told everything moves. I was told seventeen thousand hours move over, but I'm not so sure that it will not be a slow. It, it will be an immediate rollout. But I was told whatever is one hundred seventy thousand hours, not seventeen thousand. One hundred seventy thousand hours, what, or whatever it is, whatever the number, the number of hours, I, I, the number of hours um, that they have on the WWE network. I was told all moves over March eighteenth. This person says, now that the streaming content is bringing in as much money as the TV shows, do you think more effort will be put into the monthly pay-per-views? Seems outside of WrestleMania, a lot of pay-per-view matches have been filler set up at the last minute. Well, that includes Good. the Royal Rumble, by the way. Good Lord, I don't even know what the Royal Rumble card is. And where we just had the last bra. I, I had to ask, and I don't even have my answer yet, on on a couple questions on the card for, for Sunday. So, um, I do not, I, I, I believe the opposite. I believe that the money's guaranteed, and that lowers the incentive. Um, you know, I, I wish they had my work ethic because, <laughs> for me, it would make no difference whatsoever. But I've watched ever since the network where where you don't have to, um, you know, you're, you know, with pay per view, you had to promote every pay per view because it was an individual buy. So you had to convince people every month that they had to get this pay per view, or you're getting no money. With a network, you know. I mean, and, it, and it's $60, so every buy was, like, important. You know, 50 60 70 whatever the price was, depending on the pay-per-view and, and everything. So it's like every buy becomes important. With a network, it's like it's $10, and most people who are getting those pay-per-views are, are going to get the network anyway. And except for Mania, you know, the, the, the you know, because even SummerSlam doesn't swell network numbers. So it's, it's like... Um, you know, unless it's main, unless it's mania, um, they're really, you know, the pressure on putting on a show and building up matches for weeks at a time and all that isn't really there. All right, this person here says, "What do you think the Peacock deal means in the medium and long term for the WWE Network internationally?" It would seem that maintaining the existing network infrastructure for only four to five hundred thousand international subscribers is somewhat untenable long term. Given the profit margins, operation costs, etc. Um, no change. It, it you can still do it. Um, I mean, everyone. Um, believe me, everyone who's working there right now it, it, in the WWE network is 
questioning things and they were asking around and things like that today because nobody was told anything. Um, you know, they found out about it like everybody else. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of concern there. But, I mean, as far as, we'll, you know, they're going to have the content anyway for Peacock. So it's not going to change. I mean, as far as, like, uh, for, you know, the international markets, everything's going to stay exactly the same. And, 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 you know, as far as, like, what's available and... And they'll and they'll they'll keep the WWE network for that. Yes. This person here says, "Will be will there be ads for network content on Peacock? Will they go away if you pay for the premium plus tier? They will go away if you pay for the premium plus tier. And yes, there will be ads. Um, no, I don't think that there, I don't think that there will be ads during the matches. I mean, on I, when you watch Raw back, there will be ads during the match, just like on television. But I think that like on the pay per view." I could see ads between matches. I could not see the idea. I think people would, would freak if there were ads in the middle of pay-per-view matches. Um, but I have asked that question and I did not get an answer as far as like, will the ads be during the matches or not? So I don't, I don't, but I can't imagine. I cannot imagine they would do that. I mean, between matches, you know, they do those house ads anyway on the pay-per-view. So there, it's not like there's no advertising on the pay-per-views. There is. Um, so they may just do, Instead of the house ads, they may do, you know, peacock ads, you know, for other programming on the thing or or whatever, you know, or or, or bought ads. You know, I could see people wanting to buy, you know, peacock wanting to sell ads during WrestleMania between matches. All right. This person here just basically says, how much freedom does NBC Peacock have regarding the content? Could they start by everybody moves over four ninety five, nine ninety five, whatever, you get all the pay-per-views and then a year down the road. They make the decision that from now on the pay-per-views are going to be sixty-nine bucks each. Could they make that decision a year from now? They could, and they won't, because if they're going to make the decision, they'd have made it now. Um, as far as the four ninety-nine price going up, I could easily see that happening. Um, there's no plans for it right now, and even that they, when they were asked, you know, they wouldn't commit to saying no. The price won't go up. It's just that they have no plans to increase the price right now. But as far as the pay-per-views. Um, if they were going to make it a separate tier, they would they would do it now because they would do it for WrestleMania this year. That would be the one you would want to do it for, a two-day WrestleMania. So I think that they went in they went in with a mentality of how they're going to do it, and they don't want to have a pay-per-view. Comp- the pay-per-view component is too whatever for them. It's just like they don't want to do pay-per-view. Um, they would rather get the most subscribers, the most viewers watching WrestleMania and sell ads during the show. It's not going to... Ain't gonna make them. Uh, let's see, WrestleMania be it ain't gonna be eighty five million like the you know or whatever like the whatever the Connor fight's gonna be, but it would be um, forty nine million, forty two million, something like that. Um, and they ain't getting that in ads uh, for a for a seven hour WrestleMania. Not even nowhere near that. This person wants to know if it had been smarter for WWE to sell the network rights to ESPN Plus so that they are doing business with NBC, Disney, and Fox. Um, I mean, it depends on the... the. Would it have been smarter from a business standpoint in the long run for the company to sell and then have ESPN do exactly what it does with UFC? Yes because the long-term value would be way up. I don't know that they had that option, but I, I do believe ESPN, just from everything that's happened, I do believe ESPN was in the game. But there's also, um, then you've got the problem that you're you're streaming on ESPN. Then you got the problem with both NBC and Fox. Neither are going to be happy. This way, at least NBC, which has you know four of their six weekly hours, um and they've had the long relationship with and they you know it it benefits them right now more to be with nbc in the long run the you know a deal like ufc you know and i don't know that espn was going to offer that deal you know if they were going to offer them you know again like 300 million dollars for uh programming and then another 200 million for um pay-per-views um you know like they offered uh ufc um, I mean, and, 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 you know, and, and you know, the, and, and then make the money on the pay-per-views, which, which, you know, would be far, far more valuable than the way that, uh, Peacock's going to do it. Um, but, you know, it's, look, I mean, Nick Khan talked to everybody. This was the deal that he made. And, um, he, he, know, uh, 
he's a smart guy. I, I don't want to second guess his deal because um, he certainly made the right deal for today. Uh, good, it was a great deal for WWE today. This person says, actually, a lot of people have asked. I don't even think you have any idea, but any idea what's going on if you have a gift card for the WWE Network? I do. You better use it quick. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, this person here says, WWE's value... Uh, he's asking about us. We're not going anywhere right now. Also, people asking about AEW. What about AEW? Any chance they're going to move to HBO Max? If HBO Max offers them a great deal, there's no reason not to. Um, just a question of, will this spur HBO Max into going in with them? I think that, like, in... You know, there's sort of a test of time right now. I mean, like, the one thing... AEW's doing great, but it's like... You know, some people still have it as, like, beginner's luck, and they haven't, uh, you know what I mean? WWE's been around for 20 years, actually way more than that. What am I saying? It's been around, I mean, on a national basis for 36 years, and it's been around, you know, you know, on a regional basis forever. But I, I, I think this opens the door. I think it increases the value of AEW down the road for such deals. I think it opens people's eyes, especially if AEW continues to do well. Uh, but yeah, of course you open your, you know, if you're Tony Khan, you open your eyes to any kind of deal. I mean, it's like if, and you know what? Some of these companies, um, because, you know, Tony Khan's pay-per-view, because let's, let's say the pay-per-view is doing 100,000 buys. That's about where a lot of these shows are going, right? So, um they're getting about um, two and a half million a pay per view, roughly. Probably a little less because of the overseas number. Or the over well, you know what? Actually, I, I take that back. It wouldn't be less because um, you're no longer doing you know Sky Box Office with a lower price. You're on Fight TV, so pretty much you're you're you know if you're streaming, you're you're paying the price. So it's it's, it's a price. It's a uniform price now. So you're going to get about two and a half million, let's say, on a pay per view. Maybe you know, give or take a few hundred thousand. And if you stream it and you can move all your customers over to streaming and God knows AEW customers, everyone's moving over day one. I mean, I mean, um, they could lose television pay-per-view. I mean, they lost TV pay-per-view in the UK. I, I, I think it did hurt them a little bit in the UK. I don't think it hurts them at all here if they, well, it would hurt slightly, but, but they would make it up. People would, would, you know, people would switch over. Um, I think that they would, it, it would probably take longer. They don't have a Conor McGregor on their card, you know, that would get everyone to make that, you know, creates the situation where you have to watch it like freaking McGregor and, and Poirier, um, where it was just such a huge thing that, that, you know, everybody had to see it. They don't have that, but I think that most of their audience, given the age group and everything like that, most of them are going to, um, buy it on streaming and in fact when AEW AEW's very first pay-per-view um, um and, and 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 even going back to all out uh, or all in the first all in the first all in did i i forgot the percentage but it was the highest percentage of streaming versus um uh regular you know, television pay-per-view um the first all in was the highest in history i think it was a little under 50% and then the um um, you know, as far as the U.S. numbers for for BR Live and regular pay per view for the first one, so that was Double or Nothing in Vegas in in uh, 2019. That one was about 50 50, and I think that it's actually grown to where it's more than 50 percent already, even with television by its streaming. So for the AEW audience, um, you know. You know, but but they split. You know, like BR Live gets a cut. Um, you know the um, you know the cable companies get a cut, and it's a huge cut. So if let's just say BR Live or let's say HBO Max or somebody wants to do pay per view, and they go in there and go, you know what, Tony, um, you're getting two and a half million for four pay per views a year. That's ten million dollars. We'll give you twenty, and they can get the twenty because they're the middleman now. And they could break even on the 20. If, if you get somebody who wants to overpay, like Peacock, maybe you could get 25. At that point, um, does Tony Khan go, yeah, do it? Or does he just go, no, um, I got real confidence that 
I can build these numbers up and I'll make this deal in three years when my numbers are higher and I can get a better deal for a long term. And he may think that. So, um, but I mean, as far as it being something that's in the cards and should happen at some point, I would have to think that it's certainly something that you got to be thinking about. And at some point, you know, some, I mean, again, somebody's going to have to offer that, you know, WWE, because, you know, again, like a lot of these streaming companies are looking for the big hit and WWE is like the NHL and NASCAR and everything. It's considered like a big hit. And AEW is not considered that right now. And again, three years from now, you know, maybe, maybe they would, you know, I'm not saying they'd be at that level, but they might be considered at a higher level with, you know, once they've proven more staying power. But I mean, as far as inevitable and everything like that, you know, I, I think that, you know, really selling your pay per views to somebody who pays a flat fee and then gets a hundred percent rather than you getting the 50 percent. So it's, it, you know, you can get more, you can make more or they can make more and all that. Um, that makes all the economic sense in the world for someone to do that. Um, on, at the same token, um, AEW setting up its own AEW pay-per-view service, I mean, um, streaming service and putting the pay-per-views on for like $50, let's say, for the four pay-per-views a year and cutting out the cable companies. They'll, then they'll make all the money. So that's another thing that AEW needs to be thinking about as well because again you're talking about over the course of you know a year um there's five million more dollars when it comes to pay-per-views and if you want to add and do more pay-per-views in a year like 12 or 8 or something like that then there's even more money involved let's do two more here this person wants to know about the future of shows like ICW progress etc on the network they're still going to be on um as far as new uh, that remains to be seen. Um, I don't know that, I mean, it doesn't do big numbers. I don't know, um, I don't know how, um, how much incentive there is now because the idea of, of when they first bought those libraries was to create a, a higher tier. You know, that's, that was Barrios and, and, uh, Wilson's idea is to create the 1495 tier for the hardcore fans and then give them these, you know, a lot of this independent content, along with also extra WWE content with that thing, that's out the window. So the reason that they made the deal for these things, you know, for these uh, other companies um, is is out the window, essentially. And as far as like the numbers that these shows do, I mean, they're rarely there. There have been weeks where they're in the top 25, but it's almost almost every week they're not. So the viewership of that content is not really very high. So I could see, you know, um I'm sure that they'll roll some stuff out because they they purchased it and they have deals in place that are I'm sure still going. Um, but I mean, as far as it being an incentive or trying to buy, you know make deals with new companies for that, I don't I I don't think that they would be doing that. And finally, do you think this deal makes it more or less likely that NXT remains on USA? I don't think. Oh. I'll, I think it's more, put it this way, I think it makes it more likely that NXT remains on USA on Wednesday nights um, without this deal, without this importance, because this also improves Vince McMahon's uh, power and leverage with NBC Universal. They've got a way bigger financial stake in the, in the WWE now, so they'll do Vince and USA Network that favor of giving them that head-to-head -head thing to keep AEW down, whereas... Before, you know, even a week ago, if this deal wasn't made, I could see NXT being moved to another night, and it still might, but, um, you know, but as far as, like, taking NXT off television, um, I think it lowers the incentive for Vince to take, him, take it off television, um, but ultimately, it's NBC, you know, this is going to be an NBC decision, in, in, you know, when it gets, I mean, uh, when it gets right down to it, because they own the streaming, and they own the TV, so if they think that they want NXT to build up the streaming, Vince isn't going to tell them no. Um, although Vince will do all everything that he can to keep it on that Wednesday night slot, but but he's not going to tell them no. Um, and if they think that uh, you know they want it on TV, then it's going to be on TV. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. 
the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.